In this video, I am going to talk about how we can perform the process capability analysis when the data follow the normal distribution using the Python. So, which means, first of all, I need to import the required libraries. So, I need NumPy. So, I'm importing a library NumPy as NP. And I, then I needed pandas because I am going to import the data frame. So that is uh, stored in my Excel sheet. So that's why I am uh, using the pandas. So I'm importing this library with import pandas as DT. And then for the graphical analysis, I am going to import the matplotlib uh, dot uh, pyplot as PLT. And then for the uh, analysis purpose, because one of the assumption uh, regarding the process capability analysis is that the data must follow the normal distribution. But um, so for that, we will apply the normality test, okay, in order to check whether the data follow the normal distribution or not. Okay, so once we have imported these libraries, the next thing is we need to import the data. So against which we are find we want to find out the normal uh, process capability analysis. Okay, so the data uh, which I am going to read is with the help of pandas, which is pd dot. I'm using the function read underscore excel, and where the file is saved. So so I'm giving the path. So that is basically the file name is uh, piston link diameter. Okay, so uh, so the data file is over here. Uh, then I am going to store this data into a variable called df. Okay, and then I am um, uh, accessing the data, uh, the first five, uh, you can see the values. So that is df.head. With the help of this command, I would be able to see the first uh, five values. Okay, that is the, basically the parameter is the diameter. Okay, and I can see the first five values. So first of all, let's understand what kind of data it is. Okay, so if I'm going to uh, perform the process capability analysis of so being an engineer in a manufacturing firm, so we are basically uh, manufacturing a piston rings. Okay, so being a quality engineer, I want to assess the process capability. Okay, so I have taken the 25 subgroups, each group, as the five pistons, so which means the total number of values are five multiplied by 25, which is 125. Okay, so that means every time I have taken the sample of size five, so I repeat this process till up to 25 times. Okay, so whereas the specification limits of each piston rings is diameter, which is the critical to quality that is a diameter. So the specification is that is 74 mm plus minus 0 0.05, so which means uh, the target value is 74 mm. The lower specification will be 74 minus 0 0.05, which will be 73.95, whereas the upper specification limit would be 74.05. Okay. Now, uh, in order to perform the process capability analysis for this particular data, which is basically in this uh, Excel sheet I have saved. Okay. So this is the data. Uh, let me show this is the data file okay so this is total the 125 values okay uh, now in order to perform the process capability analysis the first step is we have to check the normality of the distribution of the data so uh, first of all i am going to use the probability plot in order to check whether the data follow the normal distribution or not the second thing I am going to use the histogram. So the first one we will apply the graphical analysis to check whether the data follow the normality distribution or not. Okay, so the first of all I am going to make a frame with the help of plt dot figure function. So I am saving into a variable that is fig, and then uh, I am calling this frame. I am I am saying that add the subplot with uh, with one row one column and the plot number is one so you can add as many number of rows or columns as you want okay so this is basically the number of rows number of columns and the plot number right so uh, i'm saving this into a, another variable which is ax1 right and then in order to plot the normal probability distribution plot so i am saving uh, the function which is stats dot probability plot which is basically from the uh, 
from the library of sci-fi okay that is stats dot probability plot and then the name of the uh, you can say variable so basically i am accessing the from the data frame the column name with the diameter so that is df is the data frame so we are accessing that data frames column which which, which is a diameter okay so that is you can say a variable okay which is a diameter variable and then we want to find out the normality so for that we will write down dist which means distribution is equal to again from the sci-fi the value is stats dot norm uh, that is basically indicating the normal distribution and then we are writing down plot is equal to ax1 so that means uh, the size should be equal to this one okay so once we have run this one so we would be able to see uh, this uh, particular plot but first of all we are saying that if we want to label the x-axis so you can use ax1 which is the figure dot uh, set underscore x label so i am not labeling anything so that's why this is empty okay if we want to set the title so we can use this one that is dot set underscore title okay and then i am saying show me the plot which is plot plt dot show so once we run this we can see that this is the probability plot so in this red color line this is the ideal normal probability plot and the blue dots are the actual data points if all the data points are lying on this ideal uh, probability plot so we can say that this data follow the normal probability distribution because this ideal line is drawing with the help of the normal distribution okay so as we can see that there is only one point which is might be a little bit different but most of the data points uh, as we can see that are lying on this line so uh, we can say that the data follow the normal uh, probability distribution so let's draw the histogram okay this would be the same figure uh, first of all plt dot figure and then i am mentioning the row number column number and the figures position or the figure number you can say so then i am uh, calling a function called hist okay that is plt dot hist which is a histogram and then uh, we are want to show this so again if we can see that it is look like a normal probability distribution so this was the two things which we can use graphically in order to check whether the data follow the normal distribution or not okay uh, as we can uh, also know that that this graphical analysis is basically the descriptive analysis so let's perform the test in order to check whether the data follow the normal distribution or not so for test we can apply the anderson darling test so this test basically says your null hypothesis will be the data follow a particular uh, distribution okay whatever the probability distribution is okay so we can mention that if the data you want to test whether the data follow the normal distribution then the anderson darling test h naught will be the data follow the normal distribution whereas h1 would be the data do not follow the normal distribution so in order to perform the anderson darling test so what we are going to do is from the sci-fi so i again stat dot i am calling a function anderson okay and then the variable name okay against which i want to apply the uh, test okay and then i am mentioning the distribution is normal so once i run this command i will get this output and this in this output i can see the anderson darling test statistic i can check the critical values these critical values are against the significance levels or we can say alpha level so this is against the value of 15 percent this is against the value of 10 percent this is against the value of 5 percent and so on so as we can see that let's say if our alpha is or we can say our level of significance is 5 percent so the critical value is 0 0.7 seven six four so how we are going to make the decision if the anderson darling's test statistic value okay if it is smaller than the critical value against the required significance level which is five percent so against the five percent the critical value is this one okay so if your test statistics anderson darling test test statistic value is less than this one then we will say the data follow the normal distribution okay because uh, our h naught is the data uh, follow the normal distribution whereas h1 is the data do not follow the 
distribution. So because this uh, test statistic is less than this critical value, so our decision is we cannot reject null hypothesis, which means the data follow the normal distribution. Okay. So there is another way uh, which, uh, which we can apply in order to check whether the data follow the normal distribution or not. And that is again from the sci-fi stats dot normal test and then the name of the variable. So once we do that, we will get the test statistics and the p-value and the test statistics is this for this. Okay. Okay. So uh, the interpretation with the help of uh, this particular test is, so we are getting the p-value and the decision criteria is if the p-value is greater than the pre-decided alpha value, which is the significance level that is 5%. So we will say accept H0 or we can say accept H0 means because H0 was the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is that the data do follow the normal distribution. That means from this, we can also conclude that the data follow the normal distribution. So once we know that the data follow the normal distribution, that means we can apply the process capability analysis uh, on this particular data based on the normal distribution. So how we can do that? So first of all, uh, I am saving this uh, variable. Okay, that is basically a column DF diameter into a variable called X. And then I'm basically defining a function for the first process capability index, which is CP. And the formula for the CP is the upper specification limit minus lower specification limit, okay, divided by six sigma. So that means sigma is basically the standard deviation. So I'm defining a function with the three parameters. So in how we can define a function that is DF, okay, that is a keyword in order to define the function in Python, and then CP, then X, that is the data which we are going to use. And then we will uh, mentioning uh, what is the upper specification that the customer gave us and what is the lower specification. So that means this function will take three values that is X, which is the variable, upper specification and lower specification. So then we are saying that what this function will do uh, after taking these uh, three values, okay, or you can say three arguments. Uh, the first thing we need to find out the sigma. That means we need to find out the standard deviation. So how we can do that? We are we can use the function STD, which is a standard deviation of what the variables standard deviation. So that's why I'm writing down a variable sigma is equal to the standard deviation of this variable. Okay, and then I'm applying the process capability formula, which is CP is equal to upper specification minus lower specification divided by six into sigma. And then I am saying that the return CP value. So we have defined the first function in order to calculate the CP. Similarly, um, another index is the CPK. So first of all, CP is basically providing us the information of the potential variability. Okay, whether the uh, means to telling us about the smartness of the curve or the variation in the data. Okay, so basically larger the standard deviation in your data smaller the cp value is okay smaller the standard deviation value is so larger the cp is so as we know that if the cp value is greater than one we will say our process is capable but practically speaking if the cp value is greater than 1.33 so that is more reliable but practically we can interpret if the cp value is greater than one we will say process is capable if CP is exactly equal to one, we will say process is tightly capable uh, because uh, this allowable variation is exactly equal to the process variability. But if CP is less than one, then we will say the process is not capable. Okay, now I am going to define another function which is called as CPK, which is uh, known as the measure of actual process capability. So CPK is basically telling us about the accuracy of uh, your uh, data, okay? Or you can say whether your process is able to hitting the target value or not that is provided by your customer, okay? So in order to define the CPK, as we know that the formula of CPK is minimum from mean of your process minus lower specification divided by three sigma, and then this is. So we can call it CPL because this is from the lower specification. So we will call this one CPU, which is from the upper specification. So how we can do that again, DF, CP, and again, I'm giving the three parameters. 
So this is basic the actual data. This is the upper specification, lower specification that is provided by the customer. Now we are calculating the sigma as well as I am calculating the mean value of this x variable, okay, which we have defined earlier. So once we have find out the standard deviation as well as the mean and standard deviation is stored in the variable sigma, uh, mean is stored in m. Now I can calculate the CPU. So CPU means I am calculating this portion, this upper specification portion, okay. So that means upper specification minus mean divided by 3 sigma and the value will be stored over here. And then now I'm calculating the CPL. Okay, so once I have calculated the CPU and CPL, so minimum from these two value would be equal to the CPK as the formula says. So for that, I'm going to apply from the numpy library, the function min. Okay, so np dot min from these two uh, variables. Okay, so the, how we can do that, that is using this particular method. Okay, so the minimum value be stored in CPK and the function will return the value of CPK. So we have defined two functions. Now we are going to define the, what are the upper specification and the lower specification, okay? So based on this particular problem, the lower specification as we have discussed earlier, that is 73.95, whereas the upper specification is 74.05. So that is the upper and lower specification. Now we are calling these functions. So in order to call this CP function, so I am saying that CP is equal to CP. That is basically this function X, upper specification, lower specification. And I am saying print the value of this CP. Okay, once we have run this command, okay, then uh, what I will check this one. So let me run this uh, data again, okay. And uh, let me run this one again. Okay, so now I am getting the value of CP, which is 1.6341. Okay, which is greater than 1. So we can say that the process is capable. So that means uh, the variation that was allowed by the customer. So our process is producing the lesser variation. Okay, against the allowable variation. So that's where CP is quite good or quite higher. Okay, so we can conclude that the process is capable or we can say that the variations are in control. Okay, furthermore, if we want to find out the accuracy perspective, so we need to calculate the CPK. So I'm calling a function CPK and giving the three parameter, which is uh, data values, upper specification, lower specification, and then I am printing the value of CPK, so I'm getting 1.5957. Uh, so now how we will know whether we were hitting the target or not. That means whether I am able to produce the 74 mm diameter of the ring piston or not, okay? So uh, if the value of CP and CPK are equal, so which means we are hitting the target, that means we are producing the 74 mm uh, piston rings diameter. Because right now this they are not equal, then in order to understand where our process mean is shifting, whether it is shifting towards the upper specification or lower specification. So then we need to check what is the value of CPU and what is the value of CPL. So CPU mean which we have calculated with the help of upper specification limit and CPL is uh, which we have calculated with the help of lower specification. So the upper specification value is this one, whereas lower is this one. So because the minimum value is that is this one out of these two. So that means the CPK is equal to CPU. Because CP and CPK are not equal, that means we are not hitting the target. That is indicating that uh, from the CPK value because it is equal to the value of CPU, our process mean is shifting towards the upper specification limit. Okay. So I hope you got the idea. So how we can perform the process capability analysis if the data follow the normal distribution uh, using Python. So we first of all, we have to check the normality of the data, whether you can apply the graphical uh, techniques, which is the probability plot or the histogram, or whether you can apply the Anderson Darling test or some other normality test. Okay. And then once we have uh, fine with that, then we can apply this process capability formulas in order to calculate the process capability. So thank you so much. See you in the next video.